justice for Keith Lamont. The problem with the world today is our dependence on systems beyond their control. The systems of the weather, our political systems, our economic systems. Despite our involvement, our influence, few, if any, of us can make a meaningful change in those systems. We cannot stop floods or fires or make rain water our crops in times of drought. We can vote, but as we've seen in the last years, we cannot control who is chosen to run for our votes. We might work at a company at any level, but not even the CEO can save the company if the economy tanks or bursts its bubble and the company fails to stay in business. Many fear an economic crisis, even a total economic collapse is just around the corner. Yet corporations are making record profits. A sad fact is the economy is generated by people who mostly never enjoy it. While this may always have been true, few times in history has it been so obvious the divide between the working poor, the shrinking middle class, and the top 1%. So much is in their hands now that they buy toys that are real spaceships and plan to party on Mars. Meanwhile, many workers are living in their cars. The profits are taken for the amount of the value of labor, be it physical or intellectual labor in goods or services that the creators of labor, the workers, do not earn. The amount of value the 1% can take from the workers, steal from them, their profit. The more the 1% can steal from the workers, the higher their profits. This is why the 1% has been attacking wages every year since the 1970s. This is why the 1% broke the union so mercilessly, and only very recently have workers fought to unionize again, or for the first time, workers of all professions finally making a counterattack. Inevitably, working people will look to where a lot of industrial and agriculture jobs have gone in the last years. They will realize many of these jobs are now in prisons. Why? Because the wages the workers cut for the products and services they make is even lower in the prisons than on the jobs they're making outside. In six states in the United States, Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Texas, workers in prison make no money at all. They are literally slaves. Most states where prisoners are paid at all, they make pennies an hour. The core of industrial production left in the United States is the slave and near-slave population. This is a very big part of the incredible profits of the 1% in the last years. As we begin to fight for unions, higher wages, better conditions, and much more, we fight for some control of the economic and political system. In prisons, people are forced to fight for their very survival. During such a fight, beginning on Easter Sunday in 1993 in a prison in Ohio, a man named Keith Lamar was blamed for the deaths of five prisoners during the 11-day uprising called the Lucasville Prison Uprising. The authorities were embarrassed by yet another slave rebellion in the prison, which claimed a corrections officer as well as nine prisoners. Inmates were offered early paroles, dropped charges, and other incentives if they came up with a narrative that could distract from the real problems of the prison system. Keith Lamar was to take the blame. To maintain the fiction that Keith was responsible for the riot and the deaths, key evidence was suppressed in this case, including the confession of the actual murderer. Keith was cheated out of a jury in spirits. Instead, he was tried in an almost all-white county in southern Ohio. All 12 jurors selected were white. The few black jurors that might have been chosen were blocked from serving. They sentenced him to death. He faces execution this November. Keith Lamar has been fighting this unfair racist decision of that court since 1995 and has spent all of these many years suffering solitary confinement. He's been beaten, starved, tortured, kept apart from his fellow prisoners and denied his family. But he's fought hard for his humanity, inspiring many around the world. He wrote a book in prison called Condemned, in which he takes apart his case and the whole prison industrial system. He recorded an album called Freedom First, the first ever album recorded by a prisoner on death row with some of the finest jazz musicians alive collaborating with him on making. The album came out in 2022 as did an article in the New York Times which told the world's story. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we hear, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The darkness of this world is its ignorance, its cruelty, its secret, the torment of millions of people to prop up the rulers' economy, the rulers of this world. The spiritual wickedness exists all throughout our society, 
born of the cruelty of our prison industrial plantation status quo, and thus in high places the evils of this world are continually planned. As long as millions of people slave for the benefit of the few, as long as most of us struggle to earn our living in a world based in this slavery, as long as we do not bring the light into this darkness, the secret evil will remain. But what can we do? What can we do right now? We might not be able to end the literal slavery of millions of people, millions of prisoners in the United States. We might not yet have the power to claim the full products of our own labor and end the profitable theft of our labor by the parasitic 1%, the rulers of the darkness of this world. But we can, right now, make our voices heard, demand Ohio Governor Mark DeWine release Keith Lamar immediately, Sign the petition that, is, that, that will be available, link below, and spread the word. Join the fight for justice for Keith and all the prisoners of slavery in America. Thank you. Free Keith Lamar! Thank you, Free Keith Lamar!